Hi everyone, Julie here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I thought I would do a bit of a walkthrough on some digital art. Haven't done one for a while. So I recently got inspired to create this piece which is inspired by the Chronicles of Narnia. So I wanted this fabulous, fabulous wardrobe which I ended up creating with AI. The photo I actually took in the studio with model Emily Reinhardt. So this is the actual image that we used. So what I did was I got my wardrobe image and I used Bing Image Creator and I just asked it to create a fanciful wardrobe like you would find in the Chronicles of Narnia. So from there, I then played around with, I put my model back in and I just extracted her. Nothing terribly fancy about the way I extracted her. I just removed her and then just tidied it up. So I got as much detail as I could. I then duplicated that. I then ran a hue saturation over it I blurred it and I used the perspective tool to create the shadow that I have there and I like having a shadow just on a separate layer so I can move it around if I needed to I also then put in some light beams in behind my model so that they're just gently hitting the wardrobe I then merged all that onto a fresh layer and then I painted that with the mixer brush so if I compare so that's the original images and this is the mixer brush over the top I did lose a little bit of detail in the door so I went and did a high pass filter to bring just some of those images back I then put the light back in over the top I just duplicated the one below but I did take it off where Emily is so the black is where I've painted it off the image so I didn't want it up the top here or the bottom I just wanted it through on the wardrobe I then did a dodge and burn I added some lookup tables. Now I generally like, so this is teal orange plus contrast, which is set to soft light at 20%. Then I used foggy night again, set at soft light, that's at 14%. I did a solid color, which is a greeny color that matches in with her skirt, which I have sent to exclusion at 40%. That just gives a really nice tonal effect to the image. I then did a bit of a curves layer to brighten it and lift up the shadows. I then did a brightness contrast layer, which makes it look really dark. I get that. But what I actually did was I went and did a pattern fill, which made it quite bright. So without the contrast, it's really bright. So I did the pattern fill and then I come back and did the brightness contrast. So to do the pattern fill, if you just go into pattern and click on the little drop down arrow here. Now I have some legacy patterns in here, which I don't know whether they're still available and I used an artist surface. But if you don't have access to those, you can just come in and you can go into your library if you've got it. Or I usually have quite a few different patterns and textures that I have set up in a library. And maybe that's a video for another time on how to set up a library. And you can grab a texture put it over the top, set it to whatever size you want. You can put it to light or over light or soft light and then drop the opacity down to give you that texture. The benefit of adding a texture is that it just sort of gives it that painterly finish. So if I go in, let me just zoom. And if I take it off, it's quite soft. 
if I put that painterly or the pattern over the top it sort of gives it a bit of a texture like it's painted on canvas so it's a really nice addition I find for doing some mixer brush images I've got some beautiful detail in her face I kept my mixer brush fairly soft I wanted to get absolute detail in her eyes her face her hair uh, when I was doing the dodge and burn again I wanted to keep as much detail there is a little bit of messiness on her cuff there but I'm not worried about that I've got fabulous detail in just about everything that's important so that's it for this little run through for today I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time bye for now Ooh.